Lewis, uh, you're currently number one in the charts uh, al alongside <laughs> are, yeah. Peter, uh, Peter for K. Peter K. All hail the Peter K. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah, Postman Pat. You are the voice Singing of Postman solo Pat. Singing the, the medley, yeah. That's so, all we need. Uh, uh, Great. And you're also well known around the world for your work in Star Wars The Phantom Menace. Yes. H uh, how do you use that in your career straight away? I mean, does, do people seek you out for work as a result of that? Uh, I think they did initially when, it, when, the, when the film uh, first appeared. The, the, the anticipation about it was huge. And uh, I remember actually just off the back of getting the film, I got Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds video game, right. which was amazing because they were the first two albums I ever owned was the, the Star Wars soundtrack and then it was the War of the Worlds, which uh, I, was, I was really chuffed when I got that. So I got to go to Jeff Wayne's studio and... Uh, you know, sort of meet the great man like I did with George Lucas, you know, except I didn't eat George Lucas's parsley, uh, Jeff Wayne's parsley off his plate. I ate George Lucas's, you know. Yeah, <laughs> but, I but <laughs> he was eating a starter and I, I put it to the side and um, I thought he'd finished it and I hate seeing parsley go to waste. So I just leaned over while they were chatting and took a chew of it, you know. And uh, did you enjoy that, Lewis? <laughs> oh, no. no. So I was uh, very much, uh, I was better behaved when I met Jeff Wayne. <laughs> so it has helped in your career then at some point how do you then use that do you, are you asked to replicate that work at any point or do you try and avoid it deliberately uh, what Star Wars and um, any of the voices you've done previously uh, I think well you some I think there's overlap obviously you know you um, there's a series we did for Cartoon Network called uh, Skatuni with Rupert Degas and uh, we must have been about 90 characters so you start if they start pitch shifting, I think if they start pitch shifting and make the voice sound higher, you know that the, <laughs> the producer's obviously politely saying, now that sounds like uh, somebody else you did a few weeks ago. Is that not an incredibly difficult thing to do, though, is avoid replicating voices? How do you try and do that? I mean, absolutely, because uh, I don't know. I mean, I always try and base the voice on a, an impersonation of somebody. Mm. I find that a lot easier, because then you can... Say well, it sounds a little bit like say it's a Sean Connery type of guy, or it's a, I don't know. A lot of the ones we get asked for are, are English villains, you know. You know, it's very well spoken chap, you know, like that. Say for example, and uh, you can sort of base them around some uh, voice that's been in a film that, that I've maybe picked up on over the years, you know. So uh, how do you prepare them for a role? What do you have to do to to make sure that you've got voice? the correct voice? Yeah. I, well, I I like getting the voice first. I think that's uh, much easier for me. Like the most recent thing I did was with Ford Kiernan, um, Happy Holidays, mm. where I played uh, Sir John Peters. And it, it was written up like Duncan Bannatyne from Dragon's Den. The program that I was supposedly on in the, in the sitcom was Dragon's Glen. <laughs> but they didn't want, so they changed the name. It was more like Duncan, Duncan. it was Duncan Peters, I think, in the, in the original script. But they wanted to kind of get away from that. So I just uh, I distilled it slightly and made, just made them slightly more like that. And, uh, and uh, oh, hang on. <laughs> that's very unprofessional of me. Hang on a second. Sorry about that. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> My phone went off. How rude. Anyway, where were we? Uh, yeah, so I, I, I kind of just took it back a bit and it, and it seemed to work. You know? right. So when it comes to, say, voiceover work that doesn't involve a character, what, what, what are you usually asked to do then? Uh, well, Is that, it predominantly what, character work that you do? Then? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. I guess the voice work then, uh, you just, I think you just make suggestions. You say, well, you know, because there has to be some sort of backstory to them. In animation, I think, uh, well, the most recent thing I'm, I'm working on at the moment, Gumball, the characters, um, they're similar, they're kind of, as I say, archetypes, but they are um, similar to many of the voices that you would expect to hear in cartoons. Is that sort of, you know what I mean? They're not overly, I don't know, unfamiliar, mm -hmm. you know? Like there's a dinosaur in one of them, and I just I just do him, you know, like here, you know, which again is like a movie trailer guy. Mm. If you in a world when you get down here, but I just make him more like this, more 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 jolly. Yeah. So you just you just make suggestions in the audition, and then if they like them, usually if they laugh a lot, then you know you're away, you know. How many hours do you, I mean, there must be a lot of practice involved in being able to get these, or is it? It used to be, not now. I, I find it a wee bit easier. I, I, I think since, well, certainly when, I remember being on a show years ago called First Impressions for uh, Radio 4, and we'd all be sitting in the room and everybody had a, like a cassette, 
was when it was all cassette recorders. So you'd have your voices, the source material, queued up with a, mm. a beep in between each one, and you had to fast. Everybody's sitting fast forward. And now it's so much quicker. You've got MP3, and you know you can you can just press a button, and you've got your reference. And YouTube is amazing for that stuff because you, you you can just uh, you know you just go on YouTube and say right, I need uh, you know Barack Obama, you know, and you get a clip and you're away. Mm. But uh, it's a lot easier and faster. I mean, they used to send us out VHS cassettes of the program clip that you'd have to, you know, you'd have to learn. Now they just send you a CD. Mm. I think 2D TV. When I did, um, when I worked with Giles Pilbro on 2D TV, that was when it got much easier um, to 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 learn the voices because you you know just it just cut the time down. And uh, I think just by practice, I think actually the practice that I did was actually by doing the job. Mm. I wasn't really that good at sort of. Uh, Practicing the voices over and over and over. It, it just, I, I didn't really enjoy that. I found mm. it much easier. Because I think as well, when you're in the studio with the headphones on, there's a different sound. I'm actually more used to working with headphones on than, uh, which is probably not a good thing, but, uh, you know, because if you're doing a character <laughs> in front of the camera, you can't walk about with a set of headphones on, can you? You know, I think we need to lose the headphones. Yeah, I think so. I don't think it works. I mean, he's a gangster after all. <laughs> you know, <laughs> So, you, it must be pretty important that you keep quite healthy in terms of keeping your throat and avoiding colds and such. I would recommend a bottle of whiskey a day. <laughs> I find that's a great place to start. Uh, no, well, I don't know. I mean, I warm up in the morning sometimes. I don't have exercises. Mm. Um, you know, mini, 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 me, all that stuff. I've never quite gotten that. Um, but uh, there is a there's a this uh, mouthwash thing that you can get called Sanderson's, which I find is really good mm. if you get a cold or you've uh, got a sore throat. But I don't really do a lot of warm-up exercises, you know. No. In terms of uh, being a voiceover artist, then, um, you've, we're currently in advertising there's, uh, the Meerkat, which is going great guns. Oh, is that a, something that you would like to find a character that you're constantly asked to come back to? Oh, that would be, that'd be magic, you know, I suppose. Uh, um, any actor would like it's just regular work, you know. Mm. But that is, he's brilliant. Simon was great in that. Simon Greenall was very funny. It's um, I don't know. I, I've I've done a few commercials over the years. Of, um, I suppose we did we did a series of commercials for Spec Savers with Postman mm. Pat, which were quite good fun. But uh, that was a complete fluke that that one came in because uh, you know the series has, has been on the telly and then there was you know there was nothing planned as that I knew of that to to bring that one in. But they're really funny ads, but. Mm. Yeah, that'd be that'd be great. I get, we we have we kind of we correlate ourselves into that kind of uh, uh, you know grouping of like I'll say I'm banks and floor cleaners sometimes you know because you get a spate of work maybe you're doing a a fair bit of work in that uh, that type of work and uh, or you say you know shampoos and soaps you know <laughs> that seems to be the, the measure of it you know but I haven't done a lot of shampoo commercials you know mm. uh, but yeah. Oh. Oh dear, that's not good, Jess. They're my only pair. Still, duty calls. Okay, in you go. Hello, Reverend. <laughs> Should have got respect, Savers Pep. You were saying that um, you, you know an awful lot of uh, the other voiceover artists in the business. How are they finding things at the moment when we're talking about advertising? Just kind of slowing down a little bit. Are you finding that is true of the work as well? Not really. No. I think it's a, a hugely speculative industry. And um, yeah, we had the crunch. I suppose everybody did suffer a wee bit. And uh, I'd be naive to think that nobody did. But uh, um, there's, there's work there, you know. And, there's, um, and certainly it seems to be now fingers crossed, picking up a wee bit. Mm -hmm. um, advertising, I suppose, I've been told that it sort of prospers during a recession because, you know, you've got to keep going, but I haven't really noticed it much. I think that uh, certainly the turn of the year it did, it dipped, but it, it, it's, you, you don't know, it's such an arbitrary, it's so random, you, you know, you can it's feast or famine, isn't it? It's like you're, you're working or you're not working, so who knows? I need to go to a medium and find out the future. If only we all did. If only we could. And on that note, 